That is a yes. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, my name is AJ LeBlanc. I'm one of the Education Abroad Advisors over in the International Programs Office. And I am joined by Pamela, can introduce yourself. Absolutely. Um, this is Pamela Stowas. I'm one of the academic advisors for computer science majors in the office of, well, obviously in the advising center in CICS. Um, and I will pop in later to be asking some questions of wonderful AJ. Great. Okay. So feel free to use the chat. We'll have um, time for Q&A at the end. Um, Feel free to scan the QR code. Let us know that you are here or that you are watching these slides. These will create uh, your UMass Abroad profile if you don't already have one. If you did register already, this is a different link. So just put in your information again so that we know that you came. All right, so the first thing to know is yes, computer science majors can go abroad which is great news and is not true for um, students at other universities. Um, so what we're gonna talk about today is planning your academics, um, DICE, the Database of International Course Approval and your pre-approval process. We're gonna highlight our favorite programs, um, talk to you about finding your best match, finances and your next steps before we finish up with Q&A. So there is the education in education abroad. So when students come in, we talk to them about what they need to get to graduation and how much time they have to get there. When students go abroad, they'll be still an active full-time UMass student on a UMass program, fulfilling requirements towards graduation. So these can be courses for your major. You can get gen eds done. If you have a second major, a minor or certificate, and then just electives, because you need your, you know, your 120 credits to graduate. So courses that you just want to take that maybe you can't get at UMass. So you're going to think about what you want to do abroad and how that's going to get you to graduation. So computer science majors do have some options for classes that they can take off campus. So these are some examples that students have done in the past and that your department has approved at different universities. When you're looking for classes, the course codes and titles won't be identical, but we can help you kind of figure out how to use the course catalogs at your host university, where to find a, a course description, where to find the syllabus to make some of these matches. But this is a helpful list to start with if you haven't taken these classes yet, knowing you can do them abroad and then finding those matches either on DICE or on your own that you'll submit for course approvals. So DICE is the database of international course equivalencies. Um, so there will be a link in these slides to get to this page, but you can search a few different ways. You can search by major and just put in computer science and it'll pull up all courses that have been approved. You can search by country, you can search by a specific class, and you'll see on these pages that it's going to show you the UMass course. So what would it, what it would be if you took it here? And then in the last part, it shows you what the class is called at that host university. So you can see it's not always the same title, but the content, your department has said, if you take this class abroad, it will fulfill these UMass requirements. So these are examples in Madrid, classes are taught in English. And then University of Kent in the UK, you've got some other examples here of what you can take. We're gonna look at the program search um, later so you can see these are not your only options, but what's helpful for courses that are already on this list is they have been pre-approved so you know that they are good to take. You still have to submit a transfer credit evaluation as a computer science major. So before any student goes abroad, they have to get pre-approvals from their academic advisor because you need to know what you're taking is going to come back and how it's going to fulfill requirements. So again, this is the education and education abroad. We don't want you to go take three classes that you find out later, oh, these aren't gonna fulfill any requirements and you're only going to get credit. 
So there's a course approval form that you do as part of your UMass abroad application. And then as a comp sci major, you have the TCE process. So this is where you submit the, the titles of the course and the syllabi to your department. They read what you're gonna be doing abroad and they decide yes, no, is this gonna be a match? So you're not restricted to DICE or our favorite programs. What's nice about DICE is that you already know it's been approved. So you're still gonna submit the TCE, but you don't need to include a syllabus because it's already been done for you. So some students prefer that they pick a university that's already on that list, but other students are gonna be interested in maybe other locations. So the link here, will take you to DICE. And there's a lot of information here. You see, if you filter by comp sci, you can sort by country and you can look at, again, what are your different options abroad? What are the universities? What are the courses that you need at UMass? If it's on this list, you can see what you can do at that host university. Okay, so some of our favorite programs for computer science majors on um, Harry Watt University in Scotland in the UK. This is often a very popular choice for students with your major. Um, it's in a great location. It's right in Edinburgh. It's a smaller STEM school. So they do offer um, some electives, but when students go to Harry Watt, they're really concentrating on their courses for their major. Um, you also have options in Spain. CEA Madrid is one of my top choices because your courses are guaranteed. You might not get the time slot that you're hoping for, but if you have your course list, they will help get you into those courses. Um, classes are taught in English in South Korea and Spain, as well as the Netherlands. Um, some courses are in Dutch and the Netherlands, but CompSci courses will be in English. Um, University of Groningen has amazing classes. The location is fabulous, but it doesn't match the UMass calendar. So you need to check your start dates and your end dates to make sure you're gonna be back on campus in time or back in time if you have internships or summer jobs. Um, University of Kent, I just wanna point out right now has a $2,000 scholarship and um, there's also University College Dublin, there is an early application deadline. Um, and I'll follow up, it looks like there might be some password issues I'm seeing in the chat, so I'll find out if we locked this for some reason. Um, so I'll make sure that these links are correct and that you can get in. So these are a good place to start if you're interested in these locations. Um, we've looked at the course catalogs. We've got courses already in DICE for some of these programs. But again, you are not restricted to these classes. So when you... Oops. When you are on our page, so if you just Google UMass Abroad, you'll find us. You'll see up top, there's UMass Abroad Portal. Or if you find us because you've been in the Virtual Advising Center, you'll see that you can search for programs. So when you head to that UMass Abroad Portal, it's gonna ask you to make an account. So you're gonna click UMass Abroad Login, and then you're gonna click this maroon sign-in button, and that'll pull in all your Spire information. But I just wanna go to our search page. So if you filter, so if you filter for programs that offer computer science courses, you'll see that there are more classes on here than are in DICE. But here's where you have to be a little careful because this information was put in by a human somewhere. And some of these programs will say, yes, absolutely, send us your comp size students. But then when you look at their course catalog, you'll see maybe they offer one 100 level intro course. 
So that's not going to be an option for you. So that's where your education abroad advisor and our peer advisors will be able to help because they'll show you where those course catalogs are and help you actually verify did a did a human do a good choice by saying send us comp sci students or did they just say we want to show up on a program search. So explore through here, see what you're interested in, see if they have classes that are going to fit your major. And then again, you can go back to DICE to see if things have been pre-approved. If not, you'll do that TCE process to see if those programs will work for you. So after you've thought about the education and education abroad, you also need to think about the abroad because you are about to invest your time and money. So if there's a program that academically looks ideal for you, you love the classes, it's exactly what you need, it's gonna get you to graduation, but it's in a location where you're not happy, then this is not gonna be your choice. You need to be somewhere where you're going to thrive. So thinking about in your life, where you right now feel the most successful, safe, secure, where are you living your best life and why? And what does that look like? So there's things that you need to think about, like weather, food, the size of the location, the size of your host university. Are you planning on doing any personal travel? Um, how much does it cost? What activities do they offer? What are the, what's the language in the host um, location? What do you wanna be doing when you're not in class? So I really like students to think about, again, this idea of where will you thrive? So one of my peer advisors had set up her semester. So when she went abroad, she could really go anywhere and take anything. She needed a few gen eds, but really she had the entire world. So she was also a STEM major. So she made a spreadsheet and thought about everything she wanted. Like what are things absolutely that are gonna make her happy or gonna make her comfortable and confident? Um, she was the first one in her family to get a passport. She was the first one going abroad. This was going to be her first solo trip. So for her, she wanted an English speaking country. She knew she would do well in a non English speaking country, but it just felt like a little much. And so she was like, let's, let's take this one thing off the list. So I have a little bit of so I don't have as much anxiety because I don't speak any other languages. So even if my classes are in English, I just I think I'd feel a little more confident. So that got her really to Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and the UK. So she knew she didn't want Australia or New Zealand because as she described it, she is very pale. And she knew if she was in Australia, especially she would be sunburnt the entire time. She didn't want to learn to surf. She wasn't interested in, in the beach. She wasn't you know, interested in prowling around in warm areas. So that got her to Ireland and the UK. She started comparing areas. Um, she grew up in New Jersey, stereotypical white picket fence. She had a golden retriever growing up and then she came to Amherst. So she knew she wanted something bigger. So she wanted a university that was larger. She wanted a host city that was larger. Um, she didn't wanna do London because it felt a little too big and the cost of living was a little more than she wanted to do. So that got her into Scotland. So she was looking at Glasgow and Edinburgh. She decided that Edinburgh didn't really love the feel of the city, so kept doing more research about Glasgow and it really had everything that she wanted, the city size, the university size, the location. When she's not in class, she wants to be hiking, she wants to be outdoors, the highlands were right there, the academics were there. So that got her that match because you need that Venn diagram. The education has to be there, and the abroad has to be there. And for her, Glasgow was in the middle. So this is something that we really want you to think about as well. Where are you gonna thrive? Where are you gonna be happy? So keep that in mind as you're doing your program search. And this is where you can Google like, what do students say about being an international student there? Um, what's life like in the city? Look at the clubs and societies for that campus. Go to Instagram for the picture perfect, filtered, nothing goes wrong view, and start feeling if one of these locations, like 
this is again, this is who gets your money. This is who gets your time. And we'll help you with that. But do some research about where you wanna, where you wanna live. For finances, when you are abroad for the semester, you are a full-time active UMass student, which means you get to use your financial aid, scholarships, loans, grants. Um, there's a few exceptions for in-state students. If you have in-state credits like John and Abigail Adams, if anyone has work study, those you don't get to keep, but everything else, you're gonna get billed the same way you've always gotten billed. It'll look a little different depending on the program, um, but all your financial aid disperses and then you use that money to pay for your time abroad. Um, we do have some programs that are more than in-state. We have some that are less. Um, and then you also have to think about cost of living, what the exchange rate is, what you're thinking about for your personal travel. Um, depending on how far you're going, obviously a flight to Australia is gonna cost more than a flight to Ireland. And we'll help you look for scholarships, look at budgeting, see what your options are. Um, scholarship deadlines are early though, so we really encourage you to start your research early about funding. So your next steps, so you wanna go abroad, what happens next? Um, start with your comp sci advisor and map out your semesters to graduation to think about what do you wanna do on campus and what do you wanna do abroad? Junior year writing and your integrative experience, you can't do abroad, you have to do that on campus. Um, so plan out to see, is there a time that makes the best sense for you to go? If you start planning early, you can really plan your semesters to decide what you want to do. So for some students, they kind of front load their classes. Maybe they do a summer class. So when they go abroad, they can take the semester, like take it off from their major and students in all majors do this. And they want to concentrate on gen eds and electives and they know they're on track for graduation because they started planning this early. Other students do their research and they go abroad specifically to work on academic requirements for their major because that's what they wanna concentrate on. So the earlier you start this planning, the more freedom and options you will have academically. If you're thinking of going abroad next semester, you're not gonna have as many options, but you still do have options. You just need to meet with your academic advisor soon and really map out what do you wanna do, where do you wanna do it, and when does it need to happen? You'll create your UMass Abroad profile that gets you into our system. You can start researching your options, save your favorites, think about, again, when are you going? You'll have an Education Abroad advisor here that's gonna help you. And then you're gonna meet with a peer advisor. So we have peer advising every day, as long as classes are in session, so straight through finals. You don't need an appointment, you just come in and see us. Um, we are on the edge of campus. We're next to Gorman Hall behind the construction for the new Newman Center. Um, but we also have online appointments. The peers have online appointments and your education advisor also has online appointments. You can email us at abroad at umass.edu. That's it. So yes, you can go abroad, plan early, but if you're thinking of going next semester, you do have options, but come talk to us soon. So Pamela, is there anything that you want to add that would help comp sci majors who are thinking of going abroad? I do, but give me one moment. Sure. And if anyone else has questions, Your department wants you to go, which is really nice. I talked to um, prospective students and other schools that they're applying to, just tell them, no, you can't go abroad, you won't graduate on time, it's just not gonna work. But your advisors, your department really wants to get those courses approved for you so that you can go. So AJ, you did address this a little bit, but we often hear, what's the best time to go abroad? 
So again, that really depends. So sort of stereotypically, traditionally, a lot of students go spring of junior year, but that doesn't mean it's the best for everyone. And this is why I encourage students to get started early. Um, some students, sophomore year is the better choice for them. Again, it really depends on what you want to do when you're abroad. If there's a university that you're really excited about because of their computer science department, and you look at those prereqs and you realize you need to be a junior, then does fall make sense? Does spring make sense? Do you wanna wait till first semester, senior year? Or if you're thinking of getting your computer science courses done on campus and you want to save your gen eds and electives for going abroad, then maybe you're going to go sophomore year. But again, this is where you need to work with your academic advisor because your education abroad advisor can help you research your courses, talk to you about entry requirements, what you need to do to get in country legally. But we can't sign your course approval forms. We can't get you to graduation. So plan early. Exactly. So I have some students who are studying abroad right now in their senior year. They're doing their senior year in absentia. It's called when you spend your last semester away from the university. Um, and they had satisfied all of their requirements. Granted, they may have probably wanted to go a little bit earlier in their career, but this worked out great because they were done with their major. They were done with everything. Um, and so they were able to just go and do something like, I want to live in this space. So it was a little bit more about the abroad that um, AJ mentioned rather than the education abroad um, and just get a great opportunity to, you know, live in a place they want to live, take interesting courses that are electives that, you know, will satisfy overall credits for the university, but weren't needed for, um, for the computer science major. Um, and so there, you can go abroad almost any time, except obviously in your very first semester. <laughs> um, uh, and you can do it where, as AJ has already said, you can um, do no computer science courses when you're away, as long as you've kind of worked that out and figured out what you're going to do when you're on campus with your academic advisor. And I know that AJ has mentioned this, um, but I want to stress in terms of um, the, the DICE, um, the courses that are already approved. It is super helpful that we know some programs that your courses will be approved. Otherwise, it's it's a bit more work for you um, and you do the transfer credit evaluation process. So that means going through the um, course catalogs of the institution that you wanna to go to, seeing what courses they have to offer, getting that information for the course descriptions and the syllabi, which can take a little bit of extra legwork, and making sure that it's going to be um, accepted as a computer science uh, equivalent course. So there's just more work in that process. It, there could be more reward in that process. Um, so yes, as Fabian says, that's the um, CICS TCE process, the transfer credit evaluation process. Um, and we do have that on our website and the um, and the and uh, your advisor can point you to that. And the link is also in the slide. So when you get to the DICE slide with the QR code, that'll take you to DICE and the link is in there as well. Yes. Um, so those are some of the questions that come up most frequently. I think something else that AJ and I have found um, is some students say, oh, I wanna go abroad with my friends in other majors and other uh, colleges. And you're not always gonna find a computer science <laughs> appropriate courses in some of the places that your friends are going. So we see a lot of Barcelona um, or Florence. And we currently don't really have any information about places, you know, study abroad programs that are affiliated with UMass in those places that have equivalent computer science courses. So if you need to do computer science courses while you're away, um, those are not likely gonna be the places that you can go. Again, if you want to create your schedule so that you're not doing um, computer science courses while you're away, then that can still be an option. But just so you're aware, if you're looking to go away with friends, may not happen. And I would probably advocate for not going away <laughs> with friends um, because you'll have a break at some point where you can travel with them. Um, and that's where you'll go visit them and see everything they have to offer. So they've got, you know, they're in a different location. You've gotten to know your location. Now you're visiting some other places and that's a great time to do it with friends. Yeah, if you have friends that are set on Barcelona, 
Being in Madrid is a great option. There's a high-speed train between the two. Um, Barcelona and Madrid could not be, they're so different and they're both amazing. So if you have your friend group in Madrid, they have their friend group in Barcelona, meet up and like introduce each other to your host cities. Hello. <laughs> um, other things that we get a lot, let me think. Do any of the other advisors have questions that they've gotten a lot that they want to make sure we cover on this session? Because obviously we're recording so people can watch it in the future. So we want to be sure to answer as many questions as possible or obviously any of our students who are logged in. If you have questions for us, we're happy to help. One thing I didn't talk about is risk management. Um, students have been going abroad in the time of COVID. So we brought everyone home in spring 20. We didn't send anyone summer 20, but we started sending students again in fall 20. We're one of the few universities that did because we have such a solid risk management team. We have a director of international health, safety and security, Andrea Drake. She was here long before COVID. Um, we have great, uh, relationships with our in-country partners. So we are constantly doing risk management to make sure we're sending you places that will be safe, um, as well as up to UMass academic standards. Um, so if you have concerns about mental health, physical health, access to resources, we will help you with all of that because again, we want you to thrive. We want you to do well. Uh, normally in the fall, we send around like in the before times, like about 295 students. Um, so fall 20, we sent 14, which we were very excited about because again, very few, very few universities and colleges um, in the US were sending students. And our numbers are slowly getting back up to before times. And you'll have pre-departure information about what your host country is like um, with COVID. So definitely keep that in mind. And again, not it doesn't all have to be COVID, any kind of mental health, physical health, any support services you get on campus, we'll talk to you about what that'll look like abroad. Yeah, and one thing we didn't mention is how studying abroad can really enhance your resume. Um, so, the, you know, we've run whole sessions on this, um, but just to mention, you know, things, that you can bring up in your interviews and you know, on your resume that the fact that you've navigated um, cultural differences and um, you know worked in different environments. Computer science, obviously you could work almost anywhere um, and you may be working for an international firm. So the, the fact that you've had international experience could be a really big plus. Um, and we definitely, as, as AJ said, we do encourage you to go if you can, absolutely have this experience. It is enriching in so many different ways. Um, the, um, as AJ mentioned, some of the programs are on a different academic calendar. So particularly any programs in the Southern Hemisphere, um, so uh, New Zealand uh, and Australia, um, some of them are actually on the same calendar as us um, because they've kind of created themselves for study abroad uh, folks from, uh, from the Northern Hemisphere. Um, but many, uh, if they're on the regular university calendar, their calendar is very different than ours and you will need to negotiate that as AJ already mentioned with um, any summer internship or summer job um, or being back on campus for class. Mm -hmm depending on which semester you're going. Yeah. Um, so that's important to look at is what are the dates that you would be away. Um, and you know, some people certainly want to um, extend their time after they are done with their studies and, and travel for you know, another month or so. And so figuring that out of what the schedule is and what your student visa allows for um, is important to look at. And um, Australia is back for fall, for UMass fall 2022. We haven't been able to send students for two years. Um, New Zealand isn't an option for fall 22. We're hoping they'll be back for spring 23. They've been so good about COVID protocols. I understand why they're not letting other folks into the country at this moment. Um, anything else that folks wanna? know about case looks like casey has a question <laughs> yeah um so this may be more of a uh 
question for um, Pamela, but I I can imagine this this question coming up. So I, I saw in one of the programs, it looked like um, there was a, a course that corresponded to um, CS320, which is fulfills the integrative experience requirement or can. But I think like the integrative experience and the junior year writing, those have to be completed at UMass, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we um, we do have some students um, both domestically who have taken transfer courses elsewhere um, and uh, abroad that will take a course that is equivalent to Computer Science 320, the intro to software engineering. Um, that will not satisfy the integrative experience requirement for the computer science major. So you would have to make sure that you take 326, the intro to web programming at UMass. Um, so it's totally fine to take that course. It can count as one of your 300 level electives, um, but it will not count for the integrative experience. Okay, Great That's good to catch, know Casey. because you can take 326 abroad. So if you Correct. do that, then you would need to do the other course for your Ex IE. Exactly. So, so if you do a 326. <laughs> yeah, so that's something I learned today. And that's yeah, why you so have academic advisors that get you graduation. <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, good point that you can take Intro to Web Programming 326 as well. Um, so you could take either of those um, abroad. They would still count towards your electives, um, but you would need to do um, the other course here at UMass. Fabian. Hello. Uh, for um, informatics students who are interested in studying abroad, um, there are three courses that they cannot take abroad. That includes the integrative experience, um, junior writing course, and Info 248. So none of those you're able to take abroad. Perfect. So yes, Fabian has advised for informatics majors. Um, our current informatics majors are Ernie and Jazz, who are also on the call. So anyone interested in informatics, um, can certainly check in with the informatics advisors, again, to make sure that what you're taking abroad will work um, with your schedule and you can map out your schedule um, here at UMass. So thanks for that, Fabian. And I know, Fabian, you benefited from study abroad when you were an undergrad. Um, so <laughs> you're, I've, I've heard you often uh, say it was a great experience and you encourage students to do it. Great. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the thing I feel like people talk about if not the most <laughs> um, years later about their college experience the, that, that they did. Um, I also should say, not that I'm telling you not to study abroad <laughs> in any way, shape or form, but don't feel bad if you aren't able to. Um, something I've sometimes said to, to computer scientists, particularly because you know students haven't been able to in the last, um, in, in at least a year um, with COVID, um, that, you will be a computer scientist. You will likely be making a good deal of money and you can still travel abroad um, at, at a later time. But being a student and really integrated into um, another university experience, potentially a homestay, um, living with a different family, that's, you know, that's a really unique experience. So, um, and that's something we didn't speak about. You know, you could look at that um, once you choose a program of what kind of living situation do you want? Do you want kind of an apartment on your own? Do you wanna live on campus if the, if the host university offers that? Um, do you wanna live with a family and, and fully be integrated into you know, another person's family life? Um, there are, um, I think, advantages and sometimes disadvantages to each option. Um, so that's something to consider as you're, um, once you've decided some of the other things like location and, um, and primarily the education factor. Yeah, just to uh, talk about, um, you know, the, um, the, the incredible experience of studying abroad, um, uh, you know, just uh, from, from my own experiences, I, I, I studied abroad in, in Sweden back in the, 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 the and um, it was it was it was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had in my life, and I made lifelong friends with the people that I studied abroad with from from all all around. In fact, um, this summer I'm going to see one of the people who I studied abroad with, who is um, who lives in Finland. Um, but I've maintained contact with these these five friends of mine, um, and we've had a couple of reunions over the years, um, just to like check in and, and, um, and kind of relive our experiences um, studying abroad together. So it's, 
it's um it's it's a really it's really an amazing experience and you might find that taking computer science courses abroad um, you might find that you're in smaller classes <laughs> I've, I've spoken to a student um, who is um, uh, who was taking a course with um, uh, with uh, you know a very uh, very small class size and and he was he was really happy about the experience because here you know of course uh, of uh, course, uh, uh, sizes are, are quite large. Um, so just being able to be in a smaller classroom really um, um, helped him feel more engaged in, in, in the coursework. Um, but yeah, lots lots of reasons to, um, to, to study abroad. I also just wanted to bring up the um, kind of the process, like the, the process um, of, um, uh, well, actually, no, no, I won't. I'll, I'll leave it, I'll leave it to, AJ's group to, to deal with that. Um, once you once you actually do start the uh, the process of um, you know the the application, um, just make sure to check in with your CS advisor, especially when it comes time to um, doing the TCE if necessary and the ICAF, because um, there is uh, there are certain steps that you need to that you need to follow. Um, but just just let your advisor know, and they they will help you. I know AJ mentioned the um, the international course approval form, but I don't know that we use the um, the acronym. So that's what ICAF stands for is International Course Approval Form. So you'll be doing that form both um, with um, uh, the International Programs Education Abroad Office um, and the TCE that we've mentioned, the Transfer Credit Evaluation with CICS. And that doesn't happen until you're in an application. So you don't need to remember any of this until it's time <laughs> to actually get into those course catalogs and get your classes improved. So I definitely recommend talking to peer advisors everywhere in your major in, um, in education abroad, they have them. Um, and they've done a really good job of getting students who have, you know, from a variety of majors um, and who have gone to a variety of places. So they're a really wonderful resource to you know, tell you, how, how do you manage transportation around this city? How do you um, figure out all the, the uh, money exchange and, and things like that? There's a lot of, of details to get used to um, and to think about. Um, we don't want that to be overwhelming by any means. It's all part of, of the experience. And I, I think that you will uh, definitely gain an, adult, an adulting badge um, by doing all this because you're going to uh, develop a lot of um, independence, maybe things that you haven't had to deal with before. And again, that's always enriching you as a person and your experience for, um, for later life and, and employment. Um, so that's important. But there's, there's support. There's people to ask. And there's definitely... Um, they're more than eager to speak with you about their experiences. What else? I know that I had a student um, contact me recently who's a first year who's thinking about studying abroad and asked if they could speak with somebody who's studying abroad now. Um, and that was something I was able to do was to ask the person currently studying abroad, would you be willing to talk to this person? Um, so that's some um, something that your advisor may be able to do, um, working with, with us and each other to see if you can get in touch with um, a student who's studying abroad to ask about their experience. And um, given the fact that they're a computer scientist, they may not be going where you want to go, but, um, but they can tell you a little bit about the process and um, anything uh, that they experienced in terms of obstacles or um, things that went really well. You can email your education abroad advisor or just, again, abroad at umass.edu. When you go abroad, you're in a cohort of students who are abroad at the same time as you. And we will also put you in contact with students who are currently there or who have returned. Um, so you can reach out both to students in your major or on the program or host city that you're interested in, um, because those are the ones that often are gonna have the most up-to-date information about what those classes are like, what apps they're using, recommendations about housing, personal travel. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out. We always want to put you in, in contact with, with students that are either going over and you can share information in your group chat about someone just found a really good flight or students who are there now and will tell you like down, these are the apps that you need and these are the places that you need to visit. 
Hey, Bian. Sorry, forgive me. I think <laughs> I forgot my question. Um, oh no, I remember, I remember. Um, AJ, could you, can you talk about the difference between summer programs and um, programs that occur over the fall and the spring? Yeah, so summer sessions run anywhere from three credits in three weeks all the way through a full, you can get a full semester done over the summer. If it's a three credit in three weeks, it's most likely not a STEM course. You're gonna be doing an elective or a gen ed. Um, but again, this is where you plan your options. So after meeting with your academic advisor, if you just, you don't think the semester is gonna work, it's just, it doesn't fit your plans. It's not, doesn't quite fit your goals. You're worried that it might affect your graduation date then look at your other academic options again. Gen eds, if you have a, another major minor certificate electives, then you do have summer options. If you're doing a longer program, we can look at some computer science options on where things can get tricky is what the host university is. If you're enrolled in a host university, you'll have more options than some of the programs that have their own courses, those tend not to be as STEM related. Um, but again, this is where you come in and see us. And if you say, you know, I have to get this class and it's, you know, it's this computer science class or I'm not gonna graduate, but I can only go in the summer, probably not gonna happen. Whereas if you come in and you say, I've planned out all my comp science classes for campus, but I wanna go abroad, to do some language studies to get a gen ed or to just go and have this amazing experience and come back with six or nine credits. Um, we can do that as well. I've definitely had some students go to do intensive language study. Um, and that's always an amazing experience as well because there's no better way than being immersed <coughs> in a country that speaks the language, um, <coughs> excuse me, for that study. Um, so yeah, tons of options. I think the you know, bottom line is that um, we absolutely encourage you to go. We will do our best, both from the Education Abroad um, Office and from CICS to uh, figure out how to make that happen. Um, there, there are many steps on your part. Um, so it's not just like, oh yeah, I need to register for classes on this date. Um, there's a lot more to look into and to consider, um, but that's exciting. So just to be aware that the, the planning is important, necessary, needs to happen as early as possible um, to sort through all of the details that are important to you and necessary. Um, and we're, we'd be super glad to have you have that experience. I tell students all the time that this process can be very confusing because you've never done it before. So why would you know everything? Um, so the peers and I and all the education route advisors daily tell students, if you don't have questions, we don't have a job. So we're here to get you through the whole thing from which program is the best for me all the way through the application process, pre-departure, entry requirements for your host country, you know, what your on-site resources are. And then when you're back as an alum on um, different resources, again, for how to get things on your resume and how to talk about it in interviews. So we are here for you. <laughs> yes. And Ian says in the chat, for those who are watching this recorded later, I don't know if they see the chat, um, but help AJ keep her job. It's very important. She's a dear friend. I don't I have a job. <laughs> yeah, I have to fire all my peer advisors if I don't have a job. So please, no question is too small. For those of you who drive, I mean, if you think back to when you first started driving, like where do I put my hands? Where am I looking? All of that. We know what you need to look at and what you need to do. So come see us. And I want to, on behalf of the Manning College of Information and Computer Sciences, thank AJ so much for doing this. Um, you know, she will continue to do lots of work <laughs> on your behalf and on behalf of, um, of majors across the, the university. Um, but to be able to have a particularly um, developed for us CICS study abroad session um, is really wonderful. Well, thank you so much, AJ. Absolutely. I always love working with comp sci majors. I'm, I'm familiar with most of these programs. So 
anytime you want to meet with me, stop by the advising center, meet with a peer advisor. What do you want your UMass experience to look like? And does it all have to happen on campus? And I forgot to mention that you got to visit the uh, Madrid program and you also were just in the UK, right? Um, I did. Um, I didn't get to Adelaide, but I have been to the Australia exchanges. I did get to the Spain programs and I am headed to Ireland in two weeks. So I'll be able to talk more about University College Dublin and your options there. So. So she's actually been there uh, to many of the programs or some of the programs um, and been able to visit them and talk with both students and administrators there. So that's a huge, uh, wonderful resource. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why Madrid is my one of my favorite programs. Um, I had survival Spanish, like I just barely got by and I was fine. If you're in Madrid, you're going to learn a lot more Spanish just from living in Madrid. Um, but having those courses in English, but being able to live in Madrid is just, it's fabulous. And you're in classes with Spaniards. And so a lot of them want to practice their English with you. So that's kind of nice as well. The networking is fantastic. And it's a beautiful country and the weather is gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you so much, AJ. Um, make, just to make sure that there's no final questions from our students or other folks who are here before we sign off. Obviously, you can ask us questions later um, as well, but just want to make sure we capture it uh, within the within this session. All right. Well, seeing none, I think that we will sign off. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week.